Hi everyone, today we're going to continue learning about how plants respond to their environment. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, please notice my email address on the screen, rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. Uh, if you don't have your materials together already, uh, please pause the video, find a pencil, your science notebook, and some color pencils. Specifically today, we're going to be looking at something called photoperiodism. Photoperiodism, that is a mouthful of a word. Uh, before we go on though, let's review what we learned last time. So, I have some fill in the blank questions for you uh, that are going to do with tropisms. So, our first question is blank is when plants bend or grow in response to light. Plants bend or grow in response to light. Of course, I'm talking about phototropism. Uh, it's really important that you uh, try to remember those prefixes here. It's really going to help you to to learn these different tropisms. Remember uh, photo, that prefix photo means light. So our second one is blank is when plants bend or grow in response to gravity. Bend or grow in response to gravity. What tropism is that? Of course, I'm talking about geotropism. Geo means earth. And so earth, sometimes this is called gravitropism, but more commonly it is called geotropism. What type of tropism is when plants bend or grow in response to water? Bend or grow in response to water. Of course, the prefix is hydro, and so response to water is a hydrotropism. All right, let's take a look at our learning objectives. So our learning objectives for photoperiodism are, uh, first, I need you to be able to explain what is photoperiodism. I need you to also be able to list some common examples of photoperiodism in animals. Uh, that's going to help us understand photoperiodism uh, with some examples you may already know. I need you to be able to explain what dormancy is and how plants, how it helps plants survive. I need you to be able to list some common examples of photoperiodism in plants. Explain what stimulus causes flowering to begin in flowering plants and explain the difference between long and short day plants. Those are our learning objectives. So photoperiodism. Uh, a good place to begin is with animals. Photoperiodism is really just the response of any organism, plant or animal, to seasonal changes. Now, when we talk about seasonal changes, we're talking about changes that involve the changes of the length of night and the length of day. Uh, sometimes I've heard this called biological clock. It's, uh, it's when ants, uh, ants, plants and animals have responses to changes in season. If we look at this, this is an Arctic fox. We can see that the Arctic fox has a summer coat that is really matched to its environment, uh, which is that tundra environment. But then in the winter, when, uh, the, uh, when its environment, when its habitat is covered in snow, its coat changes. Now, of course, the, the fox doesn't have to think about this, but somehow it changes in response to the seasons. So this photoperiodism is response of an organism to seasonal changes which are all about changes of day to night. When we talk about those changes, most of you already know that those winter days are much uh, shorter and those nights are much longer, whereas in summer we have longer days, which is something we're experiencing right now. Right now it's not getting dark until after eight o'clock at night and we have much shorter nights. And so I think this example is a good place for us to begin. This, even, besides, uh, even besides looking at a, um, a change of coat, which is one that you guys have probably seen before. There are lots of other types of animal behavior that is caused or controlled by photoperiodism. And remember, photoperiodism is animals changing in response to season, which is all about the amount of daylight and night. So uh, one type that, uh, that you may be familiar with is migrations. So we know that lots of uh, herd animals, uh, they will migrate. And uh, that is done based on seasonal changes. They just know when it's time to migrate. Same thing with birds. And here we can see a monarch butterfly migration. Migrations are another type of behavior that's caused by photoperiodism, which is change with the seasons. Uh, mating seasons. Right now, I have lots of birds outside that are building nests. And so, uh, you know, you may know that there are uh, there are other animals that have very particular mating seasons where they, where they have young. Oftentimes, these are in the spring. Uh, they do this because mostly food, the temperatures are going to be warmer, food is going to be more plentiful, so the chances that their offspring are surviving are much greater. Uh, 
hibernation. So hibernation, you might think of things like squirrels and chipmunks and bears. Uh, this is where animals go through a slowdown, where they, um, they stop some of those basic life processes. And uh, during a cold season where, where resources may be scarce, they actually uh, slow down their systems and go into something like a sleep, but not sleep. And we already talked about winter and summer coats. I do want to point out that these changes are, uh, these are picked up on, in animals by receptors. And so animals uh, receive this informa information from their environment via receptors about the amount of daytime and nighttime. Their bodies measure this through this biological clock. And once, once the, uh, the timing is right, so to speak, once the length of day is long enough or short enough, then their body releases hormones. Uh, which are those messenger chemicals which cause these changes in their uh, in their body so photoperiodism also happens in plants even though it may at first be slightly less recognizable so if we look at this picture we see the same tree and we have pictures of it taken in each season so we have that tree in the top left frame uh, that's a picture of it during winter then we have a picture of it uh, during spring, we can see that it's gained its leaves, new season. Uh, we can see that tree during summer. And then finally, we see the tree in fall where its leaves have begun to die back in preparation to move back to winter. So uh, this idea of plants gaining and uh, losing and regrowing their leaves, this is an example of photoperiodism in plants. Now plants, just like animals, also use receptors and they send out hormones. Uh, as they get this information from their environment, as they measure uh, the seasons, they also have a biological clock. Um, plants, plants effectively mostly measure the amount of darkness. So most plants, not all, but most plants measure the amount of darkness. And when a particular amount of darkness is what they are able to measure, then they set they set these hormones into motion to make these changes. And it helps them to survive. It helps them to be prepared for changes that are gonna be in their environment. You know, losing those leaves, that's an adaptation that helps them be prepared for the winter. Whereas in the spring, when the temperatures are warming and they can once again make food, uh, that helps prepare them for the summer. So plants are always measuring this length of night of day. Um, one of the things that I wanna to talk to you about is something called dormancy. So dormancy is a particular type of, of plant response. And this is dormancy is where plants decide uh, that they're going to, it's almost like hibernate, but in plants we call it dormancy. They're gonna stop or slow their growth. And it is similar to hibernation, but it is in plants we call it dormancy. So dormancy gives plants when there are, when there are gonna be tough times, uh, whether it's really cold temperatures, it gives them a way to slow down uh, and, uh, and really not need as much energy to survive. Now, some plants do this not when it's cold. They may do it in a dry season. So if it's going to be an extended drought or some places on our earth have dry seasons where they go through uh, long seasons where it's really, really dry. And then the next season might be really, really wet. And so plants would use dormancy to cope with these changes in their environment. Photoperiodism can also be uh, when plants are using the receptors and hormones to sense when it's time to bloom. Uh, if you go outside right now, you're undoubtedly gonna find lots of different flowering plants that are producing flowers. Uh, we know that this is part of that life cycle of plants where they are able to produce flowers, which then are able to be pollinated and then fertilized, and eventually we end up with a seed. So this is part of that plant life cycle, uh, this, this idea of blossoming. And each, each different type of plant has a specific amount of darkness that it waits for. And so undoubtedly you've known that, uh, you've noticed that different plants are flowering at different times. Um, a few weeks ago when I would walk outside, I would always notice that our dogwood, our state, our state flower was blooming. And so uh, I've noticed that these are called daffodils. The daffodils are some of the first things to bloom in the spring. It, it kind of makes us think of the arrival of spring and all daffodils are going to bloom at the same time because they're measuring uh, the amount of darkness and light. They're, they're keeping track of those seasonal changes. So we have two types of plants. We have what we call long day plants and we have short day plants. Long day plants are plants that flower when there is less than 12 hours of darkness. 
So they need a long day. So as that plant is measuring long day plants when they measure the amount of light, if uh, whenever they get to that uh, less than 12 hours of darkness, then they know it is time to flower. They release hormones and then the plant moves into flowering, starts its reproductive cycle. To contrast that, we have short day plants. These are plants that flower when there is more than about 12 hours of darkness. And so same thing, they're measuring, measuring when we end up with about more than 12 hours. And for each, for each species, it's a little different. Um, it's not exactly 12, but this is our general line that we can draw more than and less than for long day and short day plants. So this is a good time for us to go ahead and uh, pause the video. I want you to copy these notes into your notebook exactly as, are, as they are here. These notes are meant to help you on future quizzes. Uh, please copy them exactly as they are shown here. All right, guys, I think that does it for today. And until next time, stay curious.